With the RDNA 2 announcement this week, we finally have the official word from both AMD and NVIDIA as to what their product lineups are going to look like. Both companies are going to be leading the way with their flagships as well as their mid-range offering, but the big question out there is which card is going to be right for you? In today's video, we hope to answer that question while giving you guys a performance preview by using the latest specifications as well as our latest performance models. TurkForce, assemble. Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a great day. Man, with all the information we got at the RX 6000 announcement this week, I just couldn't help myself but make yet another performance video. Uh, AMD has been very clear with their design goals throughout this whole process, and as the announcement went on, they just kept showing and proving that they were able to surpass those design goals for each of the three graphics cards that were on display. Now, we've made a couple of these prediction videos in the past, and some of the specs we've used have been proven to be wrong, but guys, the majority of the leaks we have seen up to this point have been pretty spot on. But what does that even mean for gamers? What should we expect from a performance perspective going into the middle of November? Well, in today's video, I hope to answer that question as we break down both companies' product stacks by price tier and give you guys a performance preview based on our latest performance per watt models. Leading us into battle today is going to be the RTX 3090 and the RX 6900 XT. Now, if you've seen some of my previous videos, I have always claimed that the RX 6900 XT will be competitive with the 3090, but now that we know the staggering MSRP of $1,000, I find it very difficult to, for anyone to justify the cost to performance of the RTX 3090. During the presentation, AMD claimed that they surpassed their performance per watt targets with their flagship by enabling all 80 compute units at the same operating frequencies while maintaining a low 300 watt total board power when compared to the 6800 XT. Using the new total board power and performance per watt as claimed by AMD, we can compare our model's performance against the value shown during the announcement. Unfortunately, AMD only shows results assisted by the usage of AMD's smart access memory and rage mode overclocking. Regardless, our model appears to underreport 4K performance in most games, but it is right in the ballpark for giving us a feel of expected performance. Keeping this trend in mind, let's take a look at a larger data set provided to us by Hardware Unboxed. In the center of the chart, we have the 14 game average, and sure enough, the RX 6900 XT is within 5 frames of the $1500 behemoth from NVIDIA. The 6900 XT also tends to struggle in games, notably Doom Eternal, Wolfenstein Youngblood, and Metro Exodus. But remember, our model is under-reporting our 4K results here, so there's definitely going to be room for improvement as drivers as well as AMD software stack matures. Also, here's a glimpse of the 1440p expected performance with the top cards. I do want to throw a massive asterisk into this chart and claim that I believe the performance per watt is over-reporting performance in most cases. Still, it should come as no surprise that we should expect the 6900 XT to perform well here, given the operating frequencies and access to AMD's Infinity Cache. Now, arguably, the most critical battle for us today is going to be between the RTX 3080 and the RX 6800 XT. As our last video confirmed and Lisa Sue even verified on stage, the 6800 XT was the graphics card that we saw on the Zen 3 announcement, and that also confirms and actually adds confidence to our performance per watt model as we go forward. As Scott Harkelman shows on the stage at the event, the 6800 XT's data was unassisted by AMD's performance improving technologies, so our model should be a fair representation of performance. Accounting for a 300 watt total board power and using the 54% performance per watt value from the announcement, let's see how the model compares. At 1440p, our model does a reasonable job estimation in some games, but tends to over-report in Doom Eternal compared to the actual gaming values. 4K shows the opposite trend where Resident Evil 3 sticks out quite a bit, but overall the 14 game average is within 3 frames per second. As we consider the more extensive data set of games, we should be seeing a pretty good trend. Our 1440p hypothesis still holds, and I believe the model is a bit optimistic. In all likelihood, I'd still expect performance to be above the RTX 3080. 
4K, on the other hand, shows the RX 6800 XT should be able to crank out 60 FPS in all the presented games at either ultra or near ultra detail settings. Couple that with the 16 gigabytes of VRAM included in each of these cards today, and you're looking at a very compelling offering when looking at raw rasterization. The RX 6800 definitely saw a lot less of the limelight at the press event today, but it is definitely the aggressor when it comes to comparing against the RTX 3070. Our model at 1440p resolution continues to fluctuate slightly and over-report, but games like Gears 5, Youngblood, and Borderlands 3 appear to be right on target with the presentation's frame rates. However, Herkelman's chart also states that this data was collected with smart access memory enabled, accounting for about 2% performance improvement. Moving to 4K, we can see that the RX 6800 is consistently outpacing the RTX 3070, except for in Doom Eternal. Using a 50% performance per watt, our model does fall quite a bit off in Borderlands 3, Resident Evil 3, and of course Doom Eternal. However, the larger data set again just shows how strong the 6800 is going to be compared to the RTX 3070. However, the larger data set with our model paints the picture that the RX 6800 is definitely a force to be reckoned with, but begs whether it's worth the price premium coming in at $580. 4K results bring the point home, showing that AMD's cards can offer up 4K 60fps gaming in most titles. AMD provides the raw horsepower when it comes to rasterization performance, but there's still a huge question mark when it comes to additional features for these graphics cards. We still need more information from AMD about their DLSS competitor, a super resolution feature, and ray tracing implementation is still a gray area in terms of enablement and performance. For resolution upscaling, in practice, with this much horsepower, it only becomes essential when running with ray tracing enabled or looking to match frame rates with high speed refresh rate monitors. For instance, running 1440p in control with ray tracing quality set to medium, switching on DLSS bumps me from 45 FPS to 68 FPS with my RTX 2080 Super. Considering the RX 6800 is nearly double the raw rasterization performance, is this technique even necessary? As an enthusiast, ray tracing always piqued my interest, but again, is it necessary? For example, do you even realize the image quality improvement with RTX turned on with Call of Duty? Cinematic games like Control and the upcoming Cyberpunk will see the impact, but to what degree do we need DXR? The Crytek engine demo shows that a different approach to RT implementation in an engine can offer dramatic visual enhancement without the need for dedicated accelerator hardware on the GPU. Couple that with AMD providing full DirectX 12 Ultimate support, advanced developer buy-in thanks to the next-gen consoles, and more and more engines supporting future-looking technologies, Maybe AMD just has to provide enough functionality in order to enable the future technologies. With that in mind, if ray tracing and DLSS or upscaling technologies are critical for you, I would wait maybe a week or two to see if AMD is going to be coming with additional information regarding their solutions to these features, or go ahead and jump onto the NVIDIA solutions. There's only really two downsides with NVIDIA at this moment, and that is the VRAM sizes. If you're planning on using enhanced texture sizes, you are going to be drastically limited by the 10 gigabytes on the RTX 3080 and the 8 gigabytes on the RTX 3070. And of course, you can't find the graphics cards, so if you wanted to buy one, good luck. However, if our models are any indicator for success, AMD is definitely poised for taking value wins across their portfolio. The additional VRAM allocated to each of these GPUs today will enable high texture settings in all games to come, and full DirectX 12 support and open development standards help AMD entice developers to optimize for their hardware. The cast is set, the battle lines are drawn, and AMD starts their rollout with their 6800 series towards the middle of November, and they're going to be bringing that flagship in closely at the beginning of December. And let's be honest, guys, I really do think NVIDIA is struggling to come up with a proper response, especially as we get towards the end of the year. There's going to be Black Friday, all the holiday sales. And NVIDIA is going to be needing to come up with something strong in order to keep the mind share as well as their market share intact. Because let's be honest, guys, 
it feels good to finally say that there is some strong competition at the high end spec for the graphics card market. I am super excited. And that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you for sticking to the end. You know, I just want to say I have been wrong on some of my predictions for the specifications for the graphics cards, but I do believe my performance predictions have been pretty spot on. So if this is the kind of content you like to see, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, and hit subscribe, even share this video with your friends. If they're in the market for a new graphics card and they were kind of timid to buy NVIDIA, maybe this video will help persuade them to go with Team Red uh, as we go into the holiday season. And make sure you hit the bell icon. Next week, we've got our Zen 3 review. And then we're going to have all sorts of other cool content coming to the channel. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have a great one. Take care.